Hi, everyone. So my name is JP. I'm a product marketer at SAPI. And SAPI is a very new and very exciting startup that is making more and more noise in the F&B industry, notably in Dubai, in the KSA, and the GCC region in general. We started initially as a procurement application, and uh, we recently pivoted and evolved completely to become a six-in-one inventory management platform. And the reason why we decided to do that is because the demand that we saw in the market was quite overwhelming. And there wasn't anyone who was trying to solve the issues that most FNB operators, most hospitality businesses are facing. And so I'm very excited to be here and to share with you a couple of tips to be able to increase your margins, reduce your wastage, run a better performing inventory. And the tips that I've given you are the are tips that we've embedded in the products that we've built. So I'll share with you what we've seen in the market, what we've done to solve it, and some tips that you can take from this webinar and using tools that, that you can build yourself. So let's get started. What we'll cover today is, first, I'll give you the overview of what's happening in the industry today and why you should care as an F&B operator. We'll see why reducing your cost is hard. Obviously, I'm going to mention this in what's happening in the business today, in the industry. How are we solving these issues? The products that we've built, what we've seen in our customers. Tips for you and why SAPI and Alpha Pro Partners, why is this partnership, why is this integration working? So what's happening today? Costs are increasing. Everybody knows this. Uh, inflation has made its effect. The economical situation that we're in has made its effect. Restaurants have paid more for food, have paid more for labor, have paid more for real estate, and you're going to continue to do so every year. And at, on the other hand, margins keep decreasing. Why? Because you've got an ultra high competition. We see a 10% increase every year in new outlets being created. You have delivery platforms that are charging a lot to enable you to deliver your dishes. And you've got more and more customers being dependent on those delivery platforms, which means that you as a restaurant are going to depend more on these platforms to do business. So making a profit has become really hard because everything is sort of going against you in a way. And that puts you in, under an immense pressure. Now, how to make a profit? The profit formula is quite simple. It's sales minus costs. What we've seen in the market is that most F&B operators are investing their money in trying to increase sales. You invest your money by joining an aggregator. You invest your money by promoting your restaurant within that aggregator through ads. You invest your money by doing a social media uh, marketing campaign. But very few businesses invest in actually optimizing profits. Very few people invest in looking within their business and trying to reduce costs as much as possible, let alone invest in trying to reduce their costs. And there are several reasons why this is the case. One, it's the fear of missing out. If your competition is doing ads, then you want to do ads. Two, the tools that are available to optimize profits aren't that widely spread. And many of you, I'm sure, are familiar with US systems or local players that are trying to get into the back of house, but they aren't quite there yet. They do sell those platforms, but the usage from what we've seen is still very, very low. And there's one particular reason for that is that they don't specialize in optimizing profits. What they specialize in is helping you increase your sales. And so this strategy of only investing in sales and not investing enough in optimizing profits is no longer working. It's not sustainable because it's so expensive. And that means that you won't be able to survive for the long term. But reducing your cost, optimizing your profits isn't easy. It's very, very hard. And there are clear reasons for why this is the case. Operations are segregated and manual. When you look at procurement, and then when you look at inventory, and then when you look at menu performance, when you look at creating a recipe and configuring your ingredients in your system, all of these different operations are completely segregated, which means that there is no communication. And when there is no communication, it starts to have a lot of discrepancy in your business. And you're not able to reduce costs because you're not able to control or understand your costs. Data isn't accurate. The data that goes into your system and that goes out of your system, so going in, for example, means receiving your items, recording your invoices. Data going out is registering wastage accurately or reducing, registering your sales accurately isn't done accurately. Why? 
One, because the tools that you have at your disposal don't enable the ease of use, are not easy to use. And so what that means is that people don't use the tool. And if, if someone doesn't use a tool, then whenever a waste is happening, they will say, you know what, I'll take care of it later. It's quite difficult to register that. I'm very busy. And what, ad what ends up happening is they either forget or register it inaccurately. So data isn't accurate and it's very difficult to keep up. Imagine you've got, you receive 10 invoices every day. Registering an, un an invoice can be quite a time consuming task if you don't have a tool that is specifically designed for it. And so it becomes very difficult to keep up with all of that data that you have to manage. And a bunch of businesses, unsurprisingly, use Excel to do all of that. So the question you should ask yourself is, are you willing to continue managing your business by doing it on Excel? Very manual, very prone to human errors and not scale. So this is why reducing your cost is very hard. And today you're paying the price. This is not, we are very far from a nice to have product for your business. You as a business are paying the price. Here are some of the customers that we work with. And this is some of the things that they said before working with Sapi. Burger 28, they were selling dishes at a loss. Why? Because their operations were segregated. They weren't, so on the one hand, they were selling, on the one hand, they were buying ingredients to create burgers. And on the other hand, they were selling those burgers. Now, the problem is that they couldn't, they were not, they were not, and they couldn't monitor the price fluctuation of the ingredients that they were buying. So what that means is that they were selling a burger at, at a certain price based on the cost of those ingredients. And then several months later, the cost of these ingredients went up and now the profit of their burgers was going down. And so because of their, because of the segregation of the operations and because the, the operations weren't connected, well, they weren't able to monitor Pinza, which is a really famous restaurant on delivery aggregators saw that their variance was huge. Why? Because they weren't able to track it regularly. They would see the discrepancy after a month. Why? Because again, keeping track of all of that data, doing the reports is very time consuming when you're doing it manually. And so that means that you see the issue when it's way too late and you address it when it's way too late and the, DOS, the loss has already occurred. And that's a huge issue. And then FIA, the new hottest up and coming restaurant from Hatamata, saw that their team was wasting hours. Why? Because the tools that they were using weren't productivity friendly. A lot of manual processes, a lot of busy people, all of that leads to a team that is not very efficient. And so this is exactly why we created SAPI. So what is SAPI? It's a six in one inventory management platform that is designed to help you streamline your restaurant's operations. Our focus, our goal is very precise. Our goal is to help you reduce your costs, boost your productivity, and maximize your profitability. That's what we focus on. We don't do POS. We don't do front of house systems or software or solutions. What we focus on is helping businesses look within, optimize their profitability, reduce their costs, and boost their productivity. That's where we focus on. And you have here an example of the modules that we sell. Now, these are very big. It's a very big promise to a very big problem. So the question is, how do we do this? We do it with a suite of six products, which I showed just before, that enable you to take data-driven decisions across the full operation lifecycle of FMD businesses. We are obsessed with the idea of enabling the easy and accurate, and ac accurate sorry, capturing of data throughout each of your different operations. And the products that we've built, the six modules that I've presented, the, the, are based on these pillars, accuracy, ease of use, and flexibility. Everything that we do, every feature that we launch has each of those three pillars built in it. Nothing is done in ran at random because our goal is to help you look within and to look within, you have to have a product that answers each of these three pillars. So now let's talk about some tips about what we saw and how we solved the issue on reducing waste, boosting your margins, and improving your inventory. Let's talk about wastage here. What we saw in the market when we spoke to our customers was that wastage was not getting recorded or was recording too late. Depletion was done by instinct. So whenever you had wastage, for example, let's 
take the example of staff meal or staff birthday, and you decided to share five burgers with your staff. Well, sometimes some people might say, okay, we'll do it now. And then I'll record it later. And it was recovered. The depletion was done by instant. And you would go, okay, a burger is what? It's two buns and 200 grams of meat and maybe a slice of cheese. Okay, I'll just try to do it manually and that will be it. It was impossible to identify patterns because when you don't track your wastage, when you don't follow a standard procedure in tracking your wastage, then you're not able to identify trends. And that means that you're not able to, want, one, be aware of those trends and to investigate those trends in order to fix them. Three or four, rather, there wasn't any employee accountability. Imagine if I have an employee, let's call him JP, and JP records a wastage of 10 kilograms of tenderloins every day. What tells me that this waste is actually wastage due to expired products and not JP stealing something from my business? So employee accountability wasn't existing because no employee would record a waste under their name. Not because they didn't want to, but because it just wasn't set up as a standard within businesses. Again, why? Because you didn't have the tools for this. And so that means that there aren't any best practices built in there. And lastly, the worst thing that you could do is to have all of this tracked on paper. And the best was on the laptop. What does that mean? It means that whenever waste would happen, let's say, for example, that you are serving mocktails and those mocktails fall or your waiter trips, you have to register this as wastage. But then you're like, oh, oh God, okay, now I have to go back to my office. I have to open up my laptop. I have to log in into this 1990s software that we bought and then I have to register my waste. Oh, it's so, it's so painful. I'll do it later tonight. And then the night comes and then you're so busy, you're tired. You say, I'll do it at the end of the week. You forget about it. And then it's just catastrophe from. So that's what we saw in the market when we spoke with our customers. And what we decided to do was to build a product that would answer all of these different problems. So what we did is within SAPI. I'd also like to add the fact that these are problems we see as well with our clients. And I'd also like to add the fact that sometimes people don't even recognize wastage as a cost. And so what happens is you're recording your cost of sales as your invoices, you're recording your closing inventory, and then you see your margins at the end of the month. And so your margins vary from month to month. And because sometimes you just don't understand why that is. And then it sometimes occurs that there's wastage that's actually not being recorded. Yes. And that's really, really difficult for entrepreneurs and restaurant owners to kind of understand what's going on and, you know, how to quantify that so they can take action later on. But hundred percent, what you've come up with very common appearance with a lot of clients. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Rehan and I agree with you. Yeah. I'll tell you something, Rehan, people would be surprised by the number of restaurants that not only have those problems, but also invested in ERP systems, POS systems who promise a state-of-the-art, best-in-class, back-of-house solution, and the number of people who not only subscribe, but also don't end up using those tools because those tools end up being too complicated. So a lot of people might be subscribed to a product like this, but don't actually use it. And the issues is quite clear, not being user-friendly. And that leads to a lot of variance at the end of the month. So going back to SAPI, so the products that we built, again, built based on these, on these issues, First of all, the accurate recording of wastage. I've added a couple of shots from our analytic product where you can see two charts. The first one is the wastage value per location. So you understand the amount of waste based on your costs and the percentage that this represents and the wastage value per type. So what is the category of wastage that is happening the most and which location is generating the most waste? And because I'm accurately recording my wastage through SAPI's products, which again, of course, we have different features that make this possible, then I'm able to identify a trend, investigate the issue and solve it with the intent of optimizing my profits and reducing my costs. You have an automated depletion down to the raw ingredient. You have a staff birthday, you select five burgers, then we'll have an accurate depletion of all of the ingredients registered within your burger recipe, within the software, 
that will deplete your inventories down to the raw ingredients. That's the power of software. That's the power of automation and interconnected modules. You have a clear tracking of events, which goes back to the analytics, where you can follow and monitor every waste that has ever happened. You can see the date at which it happened, who registered it. Again, employee accountability is extremely important and why it happened. If you see that you've got uh, 20% of your waste is coming from expired items, then that means that maybe you should optimize your procurement and stop over ordering or ordering by instinct, or maybe strengthen the user permissions that you're giving your users. Because what you often see in kitchens is that whoever is in the kitchen can order whatever they want and there isn't any control. And this often leads to wastage due to expired products. If you see that you have a lot of, of products that have been dropped, then maybe you should better train your kitchen staff in order to reduce that. That's the power of software. That's the power of data and analytics, all right? Then user tracking is what I mentioned, which is employee accountability and recording on mobile. This is so important. Don't underestimate the effects of delaying something and forgetting about something. This at the end of the month, if you have a tool that is so complex that you decide to do it later and not now, leads to a huge variance in your business and a huge discrepancy and a huge loss of profits for you. All right. So recording on mobile, Zopi, of course, has a mobile app where you record your wastage by category. Your name is associated to it. The data is associated to it. The category is clear. Tracking is done at an ultra accurate level, which means that at the end of the day, not at the end of the month, at the end of the day, you have the analytics and the insights that you need to understand what's happening in your business and fixing it. Now, what are the tips that I can share with you to help you get on track with reducing your waste. First of all, provide tools to record on the spot. Now, don't think about SAPI. You can use an Excel. For example, we've created an Excel, which is a representation of how our product works. Of course, you don't have the benefits of automation, of ease of use, of user friendliness, but we have an Excel that showcases how to record your waste. So if you have this Excel, put it on an iPad and give it to your team so that whenever they're walking in the kitchen, they're able to record that on the go. Set up clear depletion rates per item and by recipe. Be obsessive about how a recipe is made, the quantities used, and the amount of items that you have in store. Have standard recording practices. The way that you record a waste will change from a person to another. If you install a standard way of recording your waste, for example, you have to put your name, you have to put your date, you have to put the number of items wasted, the category of this item, which inventory has it been taken out of because some restaurants have a bar inventory and they have a kitchen inventory. And if you end up depleting an ingredient from the kitchen inventory, which was initially in the bar inventory, then you end up with negative stock and this leads to nonsense at the end of the month. All right. Hold employees responsible. Some restaurants will take a cut off of their employees salary at the end of the month. If there is variance that's happening under their own responsibility. That's one of the ways that they hold them accountable. But another way to do it is to explain to your team how things work. And that ultimately, if the business fails, well, they might be out of a job. So this really is about teamwork and about holding people responsible. And don't forget and delay. That's the worst thing that you could do. It, record things as they happen. Use a mobile tool. Learn how to build urgency in your team's mind. You can have the most accurate state-of-the-art software if your team doesn't understand the urgency of needing to record things, that's an issue. Of course, the benefits of a software is that you remove the obstacles of user friendliness in order to enable them to do their job without any friction. Friction in business is the worst thing that can happen. That was super helpful. And that, that was some really good tips in what you mentioned. And obviously most staff working in F&B, they're not going to be technical experts in software, right? Yes. Yeah the more easier you make it for them to do a process, the less friction you will get from them. So hundred percent agree with that. So let's look at improving inventory performance An inventory, your inventory is the heart of your business. Everything happens in there. Everything happens in there. But the issue is that most people do not trust the heart of their business. Most people don't trust the systems that they have. And if you don't trust what you have, there's nothing that you can compare it to. What I'm mentioning here is that the theoretical value 
of your stock is the starting point of any kind of analysis that you will have in your business. The issue that we saw when we spoke to our customers was, one, I don't trust my system and I don't trust the theoretical value. Why? Again, because you have a bunch of friction. People don't follow standard procedures. Back of house tools are so difficult to use that people just abandon them and do as they wish. People don't know their variants and they can't investigate. They end up at the end of the month with, they spend maybe a day or two days inputting all of their invoices, all of the sales data that they've registered on their POS, all of the data that goes in and out, all the variants that goes in and out of the inventory happens once or twice in a month. And then they look at their reports and they're like, oh, damn, uh, my variance is of 25% and I don't know what's happening. 25% of my stock is missing and I have no idea why. So the key here is that you have to be able to build a system that you trust so that you have a theoretical value that is ultra accurate so that at the end of a specific period, you're able to compare your actual value, so what you currently have in stock, to what you should have theoretically, and then investigate any kind of discrepancy that happens. Counting stock is extremely time consuming. That again is an action that you do, whereby you analyze the stock that you have and you input this in your inventory so that at the end of the day or of the week, you look at what you've bought, what you've sold, and what you currently have in stock, and if all of it makes sense. But the issue is that, imagine, th this is typically what happens today in 90% of restaurants in the GCC. A man will go with a pen and paper, they will go into their fridge or their inventory or their pantry, and they will start counting each of the different items. Sometimes this item might be set as a package. So for example, they don't count two bottles of ketchup, they might have a box of 16 bottles of ketchup. So they will just write one box times 16 bottles of 300 milliliters of Heinz ketchup. They will do that for the entire inventory. Most of the time, they either do it alone or they do it as a team. And at the end of the count, they try to merge all of these calculations. All of this is built with red flags all over it. Okay, why? Because Whenever a human does something, whenever a human calculates, there is a high risk of errors happening. Stock counting is very time consuming. When you have a big inventory, you have to spend hours and hours to do that, but it doesn't stop there. You then have to sit, you have to do all of those calculations. Then you have to send this to your cost controller, who then has to go to the main office, who then have to digitize all of those stock counts and input them into their ERP or inventory that they currently have or the system that they have internally. So it's built with this entire system is filled with friction, filled with human, with risks of errors, is very time consuming. And this is why it doesn't happen very often. And what does that mean? It means that you cannot measure or see your variance very often. What does that mean? It means that discrepancies are found way too late and are very often too late to solve. And that's a huge issue in improving your inventory performance. And finally, ordering is done by instinct and by almost anyone. You might have a sous chef that says, oh, you know what, I need ketchup and I don't know how much I have, but I think we're gonna have you know, a big event, which means a lot of ketchup is needed. Therefore, I'm gonna order 16 bottles because one day I ordered 16 and it was a perfect quantity. Let's go for it. Okay, and it turns out the event is canceled or whatever happens, and then you have to waste all of that. Game. So these are the issues that we found within businesses. and. This is why the inventory is not performance. So here's what we did. Within the system, we have built an ultra accurate item and recipe configuration process that we've not seen anywhere else. Items are not only registered as a single item, but they're also registered as packages. And each package, so for example, instead of saying one bottle of ketchup, we have a package of one box of 12 bottles of ketchup. And then you might have another bigger package that contains six boxes of 12 bottles of ketchup. Okay. What does that mean? This means that whenever you're counting your stock, you can count your stock per package, not just by item, in order for the software to do the calculation for you on the spot, which removes the risk of human errors. And you've got ultra accurate recipe configuration. Whenever you deplete and or whenever you sell or waste a recipe, the depletion is done ultra accurately. Wastage preparation is built into the product. 
so that you can account for the rice depletion. I'll give you an example, avocados. If you buy two kilos of avocado, you're not going to use two kilos of avocado because the skin and the seed in the middle account for the weight. So whenever you're buying two kilos of avocado, whenever you're setting up your recipe or your item, you will automatically account for a 25% loss of the weight. Now, what does that mean? It means that you have an accurate depletion of your avocado and you have an accurate inventory that you can trust. Trust is the key word here, all right? Interconnected modules, operations talk to each other. For you to be able to have a performance inventory, you have to have modules that talk to each other. If you are below par, so below the optimal level of an item that you should have, then you are going to get a smart recommendation in your procurement module whenever you're ordering things, whenever you're ready to send an LPO, a purchase order, with the optimal amount of this item to buy. What does that mean? It means that you never have to overorder and therefore lose products due to waste. But it also means that you never experience shortages, meaning not being able to sell a recipe because you don't have this item in your inventory. This is the power of interconnected modules. Modules talk to each other. Data flows fluidly between those modules, which means that you're able to take data-driven decisions across your different operations. Mobile stack counting at a packaging level. There's a lot of power in mobility. A lot of softwares still don't use mobile. And that's a huge issue because it creates friction. If your team goes into an inventory and is able to take their phone, which is a smartphone, and count on the go, you remove the paperwork process, you remove the administration that goes with sharing a stock count, and you're able to count much faster. On top of that, something that Suppy does particularly well is what we call parallel stock counting, which means that you can go as a team in your inventory, you can assign sections of the inventory for each team member, and each person can count on their own. And at the end of the count, the software will bring all of these stock counts together under one single stock count, do the calculations of not only adding up the items that everyone has counted, but also doing the right calculation based on the packages that were counted. So if you counted six boxes of 12 bottles of ketchup and one box of 15 kilos of ketchup, at the end of the day, you will see one line with your inventory saying ketchup, 350 kilograms or liters, whatever unit of measurement you've chosen, that's how much you have in your inventory. So let's take this a level further. What does that mean? If you're able to count two times faster and three times as accurately because you're dividing the work and removing all of the friction, it means that you can count more often. It means that you can count two to three times a week, if not, if not daily, in order to make sure that your variance never goes above or below a certain threshold. And that means that you can take action very, very quickly. And being able to optimize your inventory performance on a more regular basis means that your business, your business will be able to optimize their performance, boost their productivity and survive and perform better than your competition. All right, approvals and permissions, a very powerful feature within SUPI, whereby you give the rights, different rights for the different people within your business, all right? A sous chef might not be given the right to actually put in an order. Their chef only might be able to put in an order. So that's one way of solving the issue of enabling anyone to order whatever they want. And then finally, you have smart procurement recommendations. It's what I mentioned before, interconnected modules, very important because it takes away the guesswork. SUPI eliminates guesswork. And if you eliminate guesswork and you take data-driven decisions across your inventory, then you're able to reduce your cost and optimize your profitability and maximize it. So what are some tips that you can take from this based on what we've seen in the market and the products that we've built? First of all, configure items and recipes with detail in mind. Be very precise with everything that you're putting into your, your inventory. Do the hard work once so that later on, everything is done with precision. Configure your items by packages. Don't just put ketchup. Select the different packages, assign a different supplier to each of those packages, and then create recipes in, with the right units of measurement, with the right items. Build a communication standard between your operations. If you have procurement on one hand and you've got inventory on the other hand, set up a process. Tell your team, if you don't have a software that does this, tell your team every day, 
after you've received your items, I want you to go and tell the person in charge of the inventory that this is what's been happening. Or this is a standard way of registering an invoice. Please do it this way. Provide mobile solutions and eliminate paperwork. Paperwork is cancer for a business. Provide mobile solutions so that your team has less friction and is able to perform better. And the less friction they have outside of the kitchen, the more time they can spend improving your recipes, making better recipes, making profitable recipes, and helping you sell more. Give clear roles and rights. It's the equivalent of user permissions. And order based on optimal levels. Uh, be obsessed about this. Remove the instinct from how much you need in a business because data never lies. Similarly to the waste recording, you have a SAPI inventory framework, which I'm happy to share with you. Just send us an email because the page is not yet live. So send us an email, happy to send it to you. It can get started with recording an accurate inventory and waste. And these mimic the feature and procedures that we have in our software. So it can get you started. And I'm happy to share. Finally, boosting margins, one of the most important things. But again, it is one of the most interesting things, but everything is, everything should work in synchronicity and synergy for this to happen. Thus the importance of reducing waste, thus the importance of boosting your inventory. So what we saw in the market is that most people don't use data to make the decision. And when it comes to building a dashboard, one, they don't have the data for it. Two, it's very time consuming to build. Three, it's not that easy. What does that mean? It means that instinct and guesswork are the way to go for many people, which is wrong. People sell based on instincts. They think that, oh, guacamole is what everybody loves. I'll keep on selling it. But whenever you don't associate price fluctuations of an ingredient to your recipe, then you won't know if you're making a profit. And you won't be able to track the evolution of profitability of your item. Whatever used to be a star can easily turn into a plow horse. So I'm referring myself here to the menu engineering chart that I have here. Whatever used to be high margin and high sales might become low margins and high sales because your supplier has increased their prices. You didn't notice. And that means that the profit you're making is not reducing. I don't know if I'm making a profit. It goes back to what I said just before. And discrepancies are found and solved too late. Imagine if for the longest time you had an item that was here, a star, and then suddenly your item is going to become a plow horse. And then you're like, damn, for the last three months, I've been selling guacamole, but I didn't even notice that I was selling it at a loss and I'm just noticing this, what's happening. All right. So that's what we saw. And here's what we did within SAPI. And this is the most exciting part of the product. Within SAPI, you've got a suite of built-in powerful dashboards and analytics that require zero designer, zero delay, zero assistance to be able to understand. This is extremely powerful. You're able to keep track of your menu profitability and your profit mix. You have real-time updates on recipe costs. You can know in real time how much it costs you to create this guacamole and see if this guacamole is actually making you a profit. And you've got integrations with FMB partners. The goal here is to give you the best in class of everything that it takes to run a business. We take our for partners and Xero. We don't specialize in accounting. We specialize in back-of-house operations. But back-of-house operations also depend on a solid accounting because as an owner, this is what you need to have under your eyes. All right? So we take the best of what it takes and we make it happen. So what are some tips that you can take from this? First of all, build a command center. Take the tools that I've given you, the wastage recording, the inventory framework, and start putting in your inventory in there by following the best practices that we've built in our product and also in this framework. Once you start having data, then build a command center. Look at the metrics that you need the most and put them in and keep measuring them. Within the inventory framework, you can see the variance that you have and you can choose a date to analyze this variance or date range, sorry. So use this as a starting point and then build your own analytics. And with time, you'll have a dashboard that makes sense to you, right? Keep track of sales, keep monitoring price fluctuations and make time to find and address discrepancies. There's a word missing here, but the word is find and address discrepancies. Every week, sit down, look at your reports. Again, if you don't have software, 
look at your reports, look at your analytics and try to understand your business. Everything starts with discipline. There's a quote I like actually, which says low discipline, low achievements, medium discipline, medium achievements, big discipline, big achievements, be disciplined and you can find a lot of things in your business. All right. Now, solving these issues delivers immense value. These are some of our customers. So Hatem and Tom from Pizza and Fiat, what they've seen was an incredible reduction in variance because they've subscribed to a software and a solution and a philosophy that starts with accuracy, accountability, and data-driven decision-making. Okay. You help your team save hours of manual work by automation, and you help your business thrive and expand because you're relying on data from a system that you trust because of the obsessive accuracy that is built in this tool. But it's not just for them. SAP is not a new, despite the fact that we are pretty new on the market, we're already working with more than 2,000 F&B operators in the UAE and the KS. Whether it's fine dining, the leading institutions in Dubai that are the newest hotspots, or the chain restaurants that we all know and love, like Popeyes, or casual restaurants like Dasha's, a personal favorite. All of these operators are going with SAPI because there is an immense trust built. But we don't stop at tech. We are the software companies that doesn't just do software. We go beyond with professional services because it takes time to run an accurate and reliable operation. It takes time. We're just your invoice, we're just doing your wastage. All of these take time. We have eliminated every kind of friction to enable you to do that easily, but it still takes time. And if you're able to outsource all of these things to someone that you trust, to a company that you trust, then you're able to save hours, be more productive, focus on what truly matters, which is making customers happy and running a thriving business. And this trust goes beyond the product. So I'll finish with this because SAPI is, again, it's not just a team of four people. We're 82 people. We've raised a bunch of money from the leading investors in the region, Beko Capital, Global Ventures. And this is why most, if not all of our customers see us as a true partner. It's not software only. It's software, it's people, it's processes that we help them build into their company and help them thrive. So thank you all 